Is this frequency open? Is this frequency open? CQ, 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 WX0, MIK, Whiskey X-Ray 0, Mike India Kilo. CQ, 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 WX0, MIK. Well, I'm tired, so let's just shoot this sucker from the hip. Hello and welcome to the next edition of the Mike Wills Podcast. This is the Dog Days of Podcasting edition for August 8th, 8th yeah, 8th of uh, 2019. I am WX0MIK and my name is Mike Wills, the host. This season we are covering amateur or ham radio. Uh, so today we are covering practical antenna systems. And because I'm getting kind of tired, I just, instead of making out elaborate notes, I'm just going to shoot from the hip and uh, read right from the book. So let's see how this works. So the first one that they talk about is dipoles and ground planes. So what is a dipole? Uh, they describe it as two electrical parts. Um Dipoles are made from a straight conductor of wire or tubing one half wavelength long with a feed point somewhere along the antenna, usually dead center. Um, most are oriented horizontally, particularly on lower frequency bands like HF. Uh, they can also be st installed vertically, sloping, even drooping. Um, then there's also... Um, multiple, multiple different ways of doing a dipole. Um, and now the popular antenna is the ground plane. Most commonly, these are one quarter length, and the feed point is at the base of the antenna. And then the ground plane acts as, uh, sorry, my radio's going off. The, uh, Come on, I'm just losing it now. The ground plane acts as one half of the dipole with a missing portion made up by the electrical mirror formed by the ground plane. The ground plane is made from a sheet metal or screen of wires called radials. So they kind of talk about that a little bit. I'm not going to read the whole book. <clears throat> um, another part that they talk about in here, uh, they talk about electrical mirror. I did previously mention that with... Um, Five eighths wave and quarter wave. Uh, one other semi important formula out of this section is um, a length calculation. So length in feet is equal to 468 divided by frequency in megahertz. So if you're looking to make a um, okay brain, now you're really going to try me. Uh, one second. So if you are going to try and make a, oh, let's just pick on 20 meters. If you're going to make a 20 meter dipole and you want to hit, um, let's see, your, let's see your general, well, let's just say 14.225 megahertz. So you take 468 divided by uh, the 14.225 um, and then uh, you would get, um, well, let's see, or 20, 10 times 3, 30. You should get somewhere around 30 feet. <clears throat> now, if you notice, I didn't do it that way. Um, in the test, for I was like, I don't want to risk forgetting 468 divided by frequency. I already had 300 divided by... Uh, um, come on, brain. 300 divided by megahertz to convert it into um, the, the wavelength. So I just, for everything I did, I just took, took 300 divided by the megahertz. You can also use it for the wavelength. And then I took that. So like I said, 20 meters, half is 10, approximately three feet per a meter, 30 feet. <clears throat> it's not perfect, but 
you know, if you're looking at more perfect um, alignment, you can use the 468 calculation. But for the purposes of the test, there are there was not any uh, any numbers that were so close that you would pick the wrong length. So that is that. And one thing that I was referencing, that's what I was grabbing, was my U.S. Amateur Radio Bands chart, cheat sheet. I'm, I'm not even sure what they call it right not my head. But anyway, this is a well-published thing uh, that you can reference. In fact, they highly recommend you have handy when you are, especially on HF, so you can see exactly where you're authorized for your bands. So those are dipoles, and dipole is what I'm looking at a dipole type when I build my HF rig. Um, then they also talk about a single element ground plane. I th yeah, that's what they're talking about. Um, so basically a vertical antenna. And th what they're saying is um, it, at that point is basically omnidirectional. Um, so that's another um, item that you can utilize within your repertoire um and that's again pretty much like a dipole except you're only building half of it because you just have the point sticking up and then the mirrors off the ground plane um they have some pretty good graphics to make kind of explain it a little bit easier too so i would just look at the book and then they also have a section on antennas for handheld radios and they talk about uh, a rubber deck antenna. Those are usually the ones that, that um, come built uh, come with the radio. And then they said, um, you know, if you are having issues or you need something more, then you can get uh, another a different antenna, or you can just use an external mobile antenna in order to use your little handheld. And that's what I plan on building here sometime soon. Sometime in the, this fall here, I'll, I'm going to have something up that I can use externally with my little handheld. So then they go into directional antennas. So um, they don't have a lot of uh, what we talked about before, the dipoles, ground planes. They don't have a lot of gain. Uh, so you can't reach out and touch someone okay <laughs> uh it's harder to make longer distances because they are just there the signal just radiate radiates out from all points parallel to the antenna and that's what it does if you get into directional antennas they are now focusing that uh, beam in one direction so and i've talked about the yagi a little bit in the past um, they talk, so they talk about beam antennas and the kind of the shape that comes out of them. Um, then they talk brief, uh, yeah. So then they start talking about the polarization of some of the bands regarding and how Yagi's are used within that. Um, they talk about, um, using a dish which would, is another directional type of antenna, you know, much like you get for your um, direct TV dish, uh, satellite TV stuff. Um, only this can also send signal and receive. Then they talk a little bit more about feed line, kind of the, more of the feed loss and, or the, yeah, the feed loss, the impedance, um, how much uh, loss of signal you would get at certain um, frequencies and so on. Um, they talk about coaxial feed line connectors. They talk about a couple different types of connectors that are commonly used. Um, the ones I have seen mostly is SMA. They call it UHF, but it's actually an SO239, and its pair is a PL259. I don't know why one is male, one is female. <laughs> and the uh, male, sort of, depending upon your perspective, depends upon which way you swing, so to speak. Um, 
I would look at the SO239 as a male, but a lot of people say the SO239 is the female because the pan goes into the SO239. Look at them. I'll research them. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, then they talk about if you're working under, over 400 megahertz, then they would recommend these type N connectors. Um, they talk about all this. They talk about a lot of this kind of things. And it's, um, if all you're planning on doing is a little handheld, probably don't need to know any of this. If you plan on buying a ready-made antenna and a mobile for your vehicle, probably don't need to know much of this. AL comes down to what um what are your what what you're into ultimately um they review swr slightly again and talk about the swr meters and watt meters and so they're talking about how they um work in in regarding to testing these things uh they talk about um antenna tuners which basically allows you to hook uh, hook up directly to your antenna and then you can uh basically test all what we talked about yesterday with the uh, SWR and actually use this to uh, to to test it and adjust it uh, accurately without actually sending a, tr a true signal out. Um, they talk about antenna analyzers, which is um, part of that whole process. That's your antenna analyzer over very low is used to measure the antenna system using a transmitter whose signal might cause interference. Antenna, and, oh, antenna, well, anyway. They talk about all the, kind of the different antenna tools out there. Some pretty good in, uh, in, information that's useful for people who need it. Um, I myself am looking initially at a, a J-pole would essentially be uh, considered the dipole or a uh, ground plane or um, vertical antenna, um, part of the dipole ground planes kind of section. Um, that's my initial first one. Um, I was also thinking about a Yagi for the purposes of cutting through the rain when we're doing um, like weather type stuff. <clears throat> On the other hand, just plain old power does the same thing. So I you know, I don't know. Um, one step at a time, get a, some sort of antenna outside so I can use my radio inside in my office. That's the plan. So um, we're going to call her here, and I probably would even talked way too long. So tomorrow we dive into amateur radio equipment, chapter five. And in this chapter, we'll, in that chapter, we'll learn about modulation, how information combines with RF, basic operation of transmitters, receivers, amplifiers. Then we'll learn some digital modes. So that's that's absolutely going to be fun. And then power supplies and batteries. So I'll probably combine a couple here and there, depending upon what they look like. Because digital, I kind of want to focus a little bit more time on. And try and even get a real world sample of listening to someone on digital and then also getting someone on um on analog because that's another mode of operation and transmission is FM. So I want to try and get some real world test uh samples for you to kind of hear and hear the you may not be able to hear the variation of different ones. I Hmm, I wonder if I can record the net on Sunday. That would actually give you a really good example of... I might try and do that. I'll probably try and re uh, record the net on, on, on Sunday. One, we are going to be covering nets in the future. And then two, you can hear the variations in different uh, transmitters. Yeah, I think I'll tr attempt that. So, thank you for listening, and 73 from WX0MIK, that frequency is clear. The frequency is clear, WX0MIK, 73.